In today's video, I'll be testing out BuzzFeed's list of cooking and food hacks. We'll be trying out some that worked, some that didn't, and some that didn't even make sense. And more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. Crazy mother- But to be honest, most of these I can't even do. I don't even think most of these are actually hacks at all. The very first one on the list is actually kind of funny. So they're saying to make adult alcoholic ice candy. You know, as opposed to children's alcoholic ice candy. They don't even go into at all how you get the bags to be perfectly shaped like that. It was only after checking their links that I found out you just buy a freezer ice bag. So it's basically just buy a product and then use it. That's the hack. I guess maybe they're taking credit for coming up with the idea of putting alcohol in it, but nobody ever said you couldn't do that. I, I just thought it was funny. All right, this next one isn't a life hack either. It's just straight up a recipe for mashed potatoes. They're just showing you a good way to make mashed potatoes. It's not really a hack, it's just a recipe. But some of these are hacks. We will get to some of these. This next one I thought was pretty interesting. They're basically just saying to cook a burger with an egg in the middle. And to do that, they suggest cutting a circle out of the middle using a shot glass. Now before I put the egg into it, I'm gonna flip this thing over. And that's my alarm going off. Okay, now that I've turned off the fire alarms, I think this thing could use another flip. I'm really worried if I flip this thing though, if the egg is gonna pop out. All right, let's give this a shot. That looks a lot less pretty now, doesn't it? I don't think that's gonna get much better, so we're just gonna go ahead and throw that thing on. Okay, here comes the big moment. I get to find out if this was worth setting off my fire alarms for. That's actually pretty good. All right, Buzzfeed. Yeah, that's actually really, really awesome. What were we doing again? This one I can actually consider a life hack because it's a different way to make a food that you have all the time, and it's using ingredients that you're probably more likely to actually have. And you need less equipment to cook it because you don't have to like fry it in a deep fryer the same way you would normal cheese sticks. So let's give it a shot. So for this cooking hack, basically what they're telling you to do is take two pieces of bread and flatten them out. Which by the way, here's kind of a cooking hack they didn't even include. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can probably use a glass. But be careful because this could break and then it would cut your hand. And of course you cut the crusts off. All right, good enough. Then you add an entire piece of cheese to each slice of bread. All right, here's where all the magic happens. Okay, here comes the big moment. We get to see what these do when you actually put them in the pan. By the way, they came out a lot thicker than I thought they were going to. It's like a tiny grilled cheese sandwich. All right, Buzzfeed, I'll give that to you. It looks like this actually did work. That's something I wouldn't be embarrassed about serving somebody at a meal or something like that. And and all the cheese is melted. I give this one an A+. It actually did work, but we won't know for sure until we try it out. It's good, I mean, it's bread and it's cheese, so if you like those two together, then you'll like this. So in case you were wondering if my waffle iron was broken from my last video, me too. In my last video, this waffle iron was covered in slime, and I have no idea if it's actually gonna work or not, or if these hash browns are just gonna taste like slime. But either way, I figured it would be okay to try out this life hack with it. This is probably gonna be a good idea because I actually hate when I get a bunch of undercooked hash browns and this is gonna be a good way to get them cooked on both sides and probably pretty quickly. Give it a few minutes and then we'll find out. Okay, here comes the big moment. My waffle iron says that it's ready. So we're gonna lift this up and hopefully we'll have some cooked hash browns. Nope, not even a little bit cooked. Maybe try giving it more time. Okay, let's check in on these hash browns again. Wow, still basically nothing. Those have been on there for a while. Let's give that a little bit longer. All right, it's been kind of a long time now and I'm really expecting some results out of these hash browns. So let's see and hopefully they've cooked. Okay, it still looks like shit. I'm done with those. Okay, now I'm sure that I don't like that life hack. If I would have put those in the pan, they would have already been cooked, and the waffle iron seems to really cook them unevenly. Maybe if you like mound a whole bunch of it in there and really squish it in, but I'm gonna say that that life hack is a fail. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now Buzzfeed has yet another way to make cheese bread. So this time they say just cut down the bread. Okay, then you basically just shove the cheese in there. Cheese is now inserted in the bread. All 
Alright, so my oven's been running for a little while, and I gotta say, at this point, my house smells like slime again. The slime that I cooked in my oven is definitely still reeking up my house, despite the fact that I've already cleaned this thing out a million times. That being said, let's get this chemically smelling bread out of there. Looks like all the cheese is melted. Let's see what it tastes like, and if it pulls apart correctly. You melt the cheese with the bread, it works. It's a good life hack. I mean, I don't really know how else you would turn this into a bunch of pieces of cheese bread, so. For this next cooking hack, they're suggesting to use your crock pot to make French toast. And I guess that'd be great if you don't mind scooping out your French toast with a spoon. Honestly, I feel like somebody just got lazy and they needed to make a whole bunch of French toast and didn't want to take the time to actually like cook several different batches, so they threw it all into a crock pot. That seems stupid. But if you enjoy the way the French toast comes out, I guess that would work for you. I'm not even interested in trying that one. All right, the next one is just salads in a jar. Just put salads in a jar. Cooking hack. What? How is that any different than using Tupperware or anything? Like, what is the what is the point of that? All right, the next one is about teas. It's just different information regarding the temperature that you cook your tea. Nobody's ever gonna use that. I mean, maybe some people, but I really doubt most people are willing to stick a thermometer into every cup of tea that they make. Just seems a little bit excessive. The perfect BLT every time. I can kind of see this one. Um, I've made bacon weaves before, and it did occur to me while I was making that bacon weave that it would fit pretty perfectly on a piece of bread if you just cut it out right. It might take a little bit more effort, but it is good. It'll keep your bacon from falling off your sandwich, probably. Next, they have a veggie cooking cheat sheet. It just tells you how long to cook it for. I guess keeping a list like that around would be kind of a hack. They usually have a page like that in every cookbook, though, so I think that people have already been doing that one. Okay, I thought the next one was a little bit cool. They're saying to use a cookie cutter to make your pancake art. So let's give that a shot. So I'm just gonna whip up some pancake batter real quick. I only need a little bit of it because we're not making that much pancakes. We're just gonna try this out one time. So this is the cookie cutter I'm using. It's, it's a bone. All right, I'm gonna do something that it didn't necessarily suggest, but I'm gonna flip it over. No, I'm not. Let's try this again. Okay, one problem with this is now the pancake is all stuck on the inside of it. I guess maybe if I were to have greased that up first, that could have been better. Yeah, I didn't really think about that. The pancake is now completely stuck to the inside of the cookie cutter. Like, I'm not gonna be able to really get that out of there now. That life hack actually sucks. It's one that really looks good. I think you're gonna have to have a little bit more preparation to actually be able to succeed at that one. Okay, for this life hack, they're suggesting to pour water into your Keurig because boiling water in your Keurig is faster than any other way. But I think that's wrong. I think that you're not only gonna take a little bit longer using your Keurig than you would a microwave, but I also think you're gonna get nasty water out of here. I clean my Keurig out fairly regularly, but I'm gonna bet you anything that there's gonna be a little bit of coffee residue just from my last few cups of coffee. I'm gonna take this out, pour my fresh water in the back. All right, now let's see what kind of boiled water that this thing gives you. Now let's see how clean this water is. There you go. Looks pretty yellow to me. I don't think that I would actually want to make any food with this. I mean, it is just leftover coffee, but you can even see some actual grounds of coffee that came out. That's not how you want to boil water. Of course, maybe I just need to clean out my Keurig more often, but you'd have to clean out your Keurig right before you did this every single time. Otherwise, you're gonna have a little bit of coffee that comes through from the last time you made some. It's just the way coffee machines work. They're kind of nasty, but it's a necessity if you drink coffee. But I don't think this is a hack. I don't understand this one at all. Can somebody please make sense of this to me? And when you click the link, it just shows you that it's a football mantra. Nothing about an actual cooking hack here. And this article is actually pretty old, but it's on the very top of the Google search results when you type in cooking hacks. So it's still one of the most popular articles regarding cooking hacks. And it makes no sense. All right, next one is kind of a cooking hack. They're basically just saying, dump all of your taco into a bag of chips and eat it like that. And I guess that would work. Although I could kind of see how you would stab yourself in the hand if you started digging for the bottom of the bag. But other than that, yeah, I guess it works. And then you don't have to worry about holding a plate. But then you could even go a step further and to just put it in a grocery bag so that way you could hang it on your ears and just walk around with a feed bag all the time. And since you're going all out here, if you don't want to get your clothes dirty, you could just take your clothes off and eat out of your food bag and shit in the street and pull people around on carriages and that sort of thing. But I'll give them credit for actually coming up with a not coming up with, they didn't come up with this, but they at least added one that I could kind of consider to be a hack. Let's go on to the next one though. Okay, this next one is on the correct way to open up a Hershey's Kiss. It's only gonna work if you actually have a third hand to catch the Hershey's. I mean, I guess you could just drop it onto the table, but how is that any easier than just peeling off the wrapper and eating it? I think what they meant to say is this is the correct way to give someone a Hershey's Kiss. Okay, this next one is actually pretty useful. It's how to tell if your avocado is ripe. Apparently the little dot at the bottom changes colors. So even though that's not really a hack, it's just kind of useful information, but if that's accurate, it's worth posting at least. The next one is pastry folding hacks. It's really just intricate baking. Not really 
so much a hack, but it does inspire you to want to make different kinds of foods. So it's kind of good, but at the same time, you're not really, it's not really a hack. You can take dough and shape it into anything you want. Like we already all knew that, but when you see the images of people doing it, it just seems that much less complex. So it can be kind of eye opening, but at the same time, it's not really a life hack. It's just a recipe, kind of like the mashed potatoes. All right, the next one they shared came with the caption, it's not pretty, but a panini maker can be used to make omelets. If it's not pretty, then what's the point of sharing it? I mean, when you apply heat to eggs, you can cook them. We all know that. You can cook eggs in a panini maker, in a waffle iron, in a coffee pot, in anything that you want. But if it comes out shitty like that, what's the point? Okay, this next one is the best way to cook a hot dog perfectly. This one I'm a little torn about because it's just an interesting different way to cook a hot dog. I don't know that it would actually be better. It seems like it would probably just fall apart and also not fit inside of the bun anymore. But the worst part about this is they don't even exactly tell you how to do it. You have to follow the tiny little links that they have somewhat hidden underneath the photos back to the original post and find out how they did it. It's kind of self-explanatory. It just seems like a different or cool way to do it. It doesn't actually seem like something that's useful. All right, the next one with the pancake pops, that probably works. I mean, you're just cooking small pancakes and putting a stick in it. But it's not really a food hack necessarily because most people don't have lollipop sticks. That's probably a pretty difficult thing to find in the grocery store. And not only that, but who wants to eat a pancake that's that big? You'd have to eat like 50 of those things. And the fact that it's on a stick doesn't really make it better. Ridiculous, but technically a food hack. I guess that's kind of stupid. <laughs> I mean, they knew it was stupid when they posted this. Come on. Now, I know this was a little off for my usual video, but I am going to get back to the challenges on the next one. So if you got any good dares, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you've yet to have done that. And I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with a new video on one of my channels, which by the way, I'm still working on the daily thing. It's just taking me a little bit to get caught up. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.